the Citroen C3 Aircross has always offered something a little bit different in the small SUV class. It looks like nothing else, and Citroen have prioritised ride comfort over sharp handling, which makes sense in a car like this. But now the Citroen faces a wave of fresh rivals, which include the new Peugeot 2008 and the new Nissan Juke, and Citroen have updated the C3 Aircross to put up a fight. But has it worked, and can the Citroen C3 Aircross now compete with the class leaders? From the outside, not much has changed aside from a new, sharper front-end treatment which is more in line with the rest of the Citroen range. The rest of the cars remain pretty much unchanged, with a few interesting touches like decals on the rear quarter lights and distinctive plastic bumps on the rear bumper. But does it look better than the new Duke or Seat Arona? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. So out on the road, in the new C3 Aircross, what are the first impressions? Well. Initially, you get in the car and the seats are really comfortable. This car has the advanced comfort seats, which has 15 millimeters of extra padding. And they're really supportive, really soft, and they've just got a little bit of give in them that you might not expect, so that's nice. The driving position is good as well. It's nice and adjustable. Steering wheel's adjustable for reach, which is useful too. And generally, yeah, the ambience is quite nice. It's light and airy in here. I've got a good view out of the road ahead. And then we have the main upgrade, of the facelifted C3 Aircross. And that is this brand new nine inch touchscreen in place of the seven inch version in the previous car. And it really is a nice step up. Graphics are quite clear and crisp. It's easy to use. Unfortunately, the climate controls are embedded within the touchscreen. So you do have to dive into those, which can be a bit irritating while you're driving, but there is a shortcut button for the climate controls at least. And we've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay too. So top marks for functionality. In the back, knee room is just about enough for one six-footer sitting behind another. The entire row can slide forwards or backwards for either more legroom or boot space. When they're furthest back to maximize legroom, the C3 Aircross has 410 liters of boot space, which is close to what the Nissan Juke offers. Of course, the seats can fold away completely too to give 1,289 liters of boot capacity. One thing you don't get in the new C3 Aircross is any form of electrified powertrains, like you do in the new HRV from Honda, for example. And that means you're confined to a familiar lineup of petrol and diesel engines. There are two petrol engines available. Both are 1.2 litre three cylinder turbocharged motors, with one having 108 bhp and the other having 128 bhp. The single diesel option has 108 bhp too, and an automatic gearbox can only be had with the most powerful petrol model. And the car we're driving today is the lower power petrol model with a manual gearbox. And this is predicted to be the best seller in the new C3 Aircross range. So what's it like? Well, I really quite like this little three cylinder engine. It's got a bit of character, sounds interesting, and it's got a turbocharger as well, which means that performance, I mean, it's not rapid, but it's quite effortless, you know? You've got that mid-range torque, which means you don't have to row the gearbox and really ring this thing out to move anywhere. So that's nice. As you might be able to hear there, it does sound a little bit strangled when you start to rev it out, but really this car isn't about going quickly. It's about just sitting back, relaxing, and cruising along, lolloping along, because this car's all about the comfort, as Citroen claim. So on that subject, what's the ride quality like? Well. It's really quite nice. Citroen have gone for a really relaxed, softly sprung setup with this car. And it really shows over bumpy roads like this, it's just able to smother all the bigger bumps beautifully. And not many cars in this class are able to do so. One thing I will say is that the shorter, sharper imperfections, like say a pothole or a ridge in the road, do sometimes send a shock through the cabin. So it's not imperious, but it's very comfortable, very nice to drive. But one thing I will say as a trade-off for this sort of comfortable ride and this soft setup is that the steering and the whole attitude of the car is a little bit vague. It's not totally precise. And these are quite narrow lanes here. And I'm sort of second guessing with the wheel because it doesn't weight up like you'd expect. And it's just not pin sharp accurate like you might want to thread it through narrow lanes and between gaps. You're just sort of flailing with the wheel a little bit and hoping that the car goes in the direction you want. It's not really bad, but it's just something to know. And when you push on, which really isn't what this car's meant for, it's worth trying it. 
Oh uh, yeah, the car leans over quite significantly. It's not precise, but you know what? It's got plenty of grip, it's safe and predictable. It's not gonna throw you off the road. That's the main thing. And again, this car is not about that. It's about cruising along in comfort, relaxing, chilling with your family in the back, that sort of stuff. And it does that very well, if I'm honest. So the big question then, has the C3 Aircross ascended to the top of the class with this facelift? Well, I think it's closer than you might think because there's not really another small SUV that offers this kind of demeanor and this kind of funkiness inside. It's a very unique car, this, and if you like the way it looks, if you like the styling inside as well, and you want something that's comfortable, rounded off, and just laid back in its approach, then I think the C3 Aircross is a really nice bet.